Hello and welcome to this special edition of our Enterprise Development class, which also doubles as the graduation ceremony for the just concluded cohort of our Students Employability and Enterprise Development Scheme. I'm particularly excited about this edition because of the keynote speaker that we have. You are going to discover him very shortly and you will see why I am so excited. But before then, I just want to encourage you to please pay attention, ensure that you take notes and complete your learning journal because it's not just about getting knowledge, getting information, getting insights. It's more about what you do with all of those things. So the learning journal will help you to reflect because learning is not complete without reflection. Okay, you take in the knowledge and then you reflect. After you have reflected, you implement or you act on what you have reflected upon, okay? Then when you have done that, you teach others. You will be amazed at how your life will change if you continue to follow this sequence. Okay, so we go right into it. We're going to take our opening prayer. Then we have the keynote address. You can ask your questions at any point during the keynote address. Just type in the chat. Type your questions in the chat. You are also going to find a link that you can click and use that to submit your questions. And we have a discussion platform also, Business Mastery Club. If you are not yet on the platform, you are going to find the link to join. You can also ask your questions there. So feel free to ask your questions as the keynote address uh, is being delivered. Our uh, guest speaker is also going to be with us, so you can you can um, ask your questions and have him answer them, okay, directly in the chat. He is also giving his email address, so feel free to contact him by email, but remember to follow the principles that he's sharing with us, okay, when you are reaching out to him. So after the question and answers, we have a micro learning and we have a closing prayer. Okay, so let's get started right away. Let's take our opening prayer. Dear God, I ask for an outpouring of your rain upon the business and career in which I have offered my work as an act of worship to you. By your spirit of wisdom and revelation, fill my mind with divinely inspired thoughts and strategies that will empower me for supernatural productivity and extraordinary success in all that I do. Open the heavens and grant me insights, concepts, and ideas that will place a clear distinction upon my work through the uniqueness of my products and services. In addition to this, Father, I ask for the reign of your favor upon every work I have ever rendered. I ask that this reign of favor will cause the voice of my work to be heard on the streets and in palaces, that men and things will be drawn unto me, and by deeds my work generates great surplus. I ask that kings will hear of the excellent spirit your reign has produced in me, and they will open great doors and grant opportunities unto me. Okay, so now we're going to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Olushola John. He's a mentor, he's a coach, and I have personally enjoyed the benefits of his mentorship, for which I am very grateful. I believe that you are going to get a lot. I had the privilege of, you know, <laughs> listening to the keynote session before you, okay? So I understand, you know, I've listened to it more than twice, okay? And I am still part of this again, you know? So it, it, it's very, very valuable. I want to encourage you to pay attention and to take notes so that you can go over it over and over again and digest all of the nuggets just as I have done and I am still doing. Okay, so we're going to take his profile now and immediately after that, we'll have the keynote address. Thank you. Dr. Zola John is a versatile coach and mentor who has helped diverse groups of professionals and entrepreneurs to achieve transformational results along the spectrums of career and personal development over the past 15 years. 
His uncanny ability to bring the best out of people has earned him a place as a consultant and expert guide to businesses of various sizes, faith-based organizations, schools, non-profits, and leadership teams in the development sector. Some of his recent engagements include a training and coaching project for returnees to Nigeria sponsored by the German government through the German Agency for International Cooperation GIZ. Dr. Solar John has built an excellent track record of providing comprehensive solutions in the areas of leadership crisis, change management, and emotional intelligence. His knack for producing exceptional results has endeared him to clients across Nigeria and other African countries. He is also a leadership and organizational skills development trainer, conference speaker, and workshop facilitator with significant experience in conflict management and public service delivery. His commitment to continuous improvement and lifelong learning is evident in his portfolio of relevant professional certifications across various fields ranging from emotional intelligence to career coaching and neuro-linguistic programming NLP. Sola John holds a PhD from the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. He is the chaplain of the Chapel of Abundant Life, College of Aviation, Zaria. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I'm glad at what you guys are doing, and it's beautiful hearing that this is Students' Employability and Enterprise development. I have the privilege to have related with uh, the, the anchor person in, in person of Mr. Philip Amiola and I'm so glad to have had to work with him. He's a dynamic young man and very visionary. He told me I'll be talking about building a successful career through high quality relationships and I think this is a very important topic for you to know at this stage of your life. When we talk about relationship and career, I, they almost go hand in hand. In fact, relationship and success, relationship and life. Life itself is all about relationship. Imagine when you were born. Before you came to the world to see the first human being, you had a relationship with someone. Or there was a relationship between some people. Okay? So your father and your mother had a relationship through courtship, and then they had interaction that led to pregnancy. And then right in the womb, you had a relationship with your mother for the space of about nine months. And then you were giving birth to, before you ever knew how to call your name, people had carried you, people had related with you, people had beat you, people had backed you, you know, people had fed you. And then you grew up to now decide whether you want to continue with those people or you want to have new relationships. So relationship is part of life. It's key to everything that we do. Here we are talking about relationship and career, building quality relationship and your career. But I want you to know that everything in your life has to do with relationship. So I, I, I begin by remembering that when I was leaving the university, I had this professor, um, very intelligent man, and he taught us quite a lot about Aristotle, Socrates, you can remember all the philosophers. And I asked him a question. I said to him, Prof, I have a question for you. I'm not going to go for an interview and I will cite Aristotle. I'm not going to talk about Bertolt Brecht. I'm not going to talk about some of these great dramatists or philosophers. I'm not going to talk about Friedrich Nietzsche. So, in summary, for the years we have spent with you, could you please just give us in three values, what are we leaving your class with? And Prof said, he gave us three, maybe because I'm not a very, very intelligent student. I can remember only two. All right, he said, first, the supremacy of intelligence. Don't joke with knowledge. Seek knowledge. Second value, he said, never look down on anybody. Like I said, the third uh, point I've forgotten now. It's been many years that I left the university as undergraduate, but I didn't forget this. And so, I left the school remembering Professor J.S. Ila that I have to place supremacy on intelligence, and the second thing is not to look down on anybody. So number two fits into what we are talking, we are talking about here, building relationships. Again, 
I grew up with a parent that valued so much, a relationship so much. I saw them, by the time I was in secondary school, there was a time we were like 15 under my parents, if not up to 18, you know. And the number of us that were their children were just like three of us. Others, cousins, some, we don't even know them. We are not related. They came from another community. So we grew up in the same house under my father. He fed us, clothed us, and did all of that. So I saw firsthand the benefit of building relationship. So when we talk about building relationship, we are talking about knowing people. We are talking about relating with people. Not just on surface level because of what you need to get from them, but at a deeper level where you become part of their life and they become part of your life. So it's, it's, it's more than just surface kind of a thing. It's a deeper kind of relationship that you can tell that I know a bit of this person and this person knows a bit about me. And so I thought about what do we need to do if we are going to build quality relationship? And I think the first thing we need to take seriously is to value people. We don't build relationship because of what we need, because of what we want. We build relationship because we believe in humanity. You need to understand that everyone you meet is important. He could be a manager, he could be a messenger, he could be a gate man, he could be a general manager. You just need to believe in humanity. What makes us is not our status. What makes us is not our resources. What makes us is not, it's not even our looks. It's the fact that we are human. And for if you see people from that light, you discover that everyone is handsome, everyone is beautiful. What makes us human is the spirit that is in us. Okay? It's not our face. It's not our shape. It's not our figure. Good as they are, they are just like a house that we live in. And so when you believe in humanity, that is the beginning point. Do you believe in humanity? Do you see the messenger as a human being, as much as you see the manager as a human being? Or you relate with people simply because of what you can get from them? And that is the foundation. So, if you value people, then you relate with people. If you relate with people, then you give them attention and give them time. And their relationship begins. But for you to build quality relationship, there has to be personal philosophy. You've got to believe in something. You have to have a value. There's something you stand for. Why are you building a relationship? Do you just want to know people because you want to know them? Do you want to know about them because you want to know about them? Or you want to know them and know about them because you want to help them? For instance, my own personal philosophy for building a relationship is live and help live. I believe in living and I believe in supporting people to live better. Now, this doesn't necessarily translate into the fact that I have all things I made. That's not what it means. But in any little way I can, I want to support people. In any little way I can, I want to help people. And so with that mindset, I meet people. I approach people. Okay? I relate with people. And I'm looking out for how can I be of help. Not necessarily what can they do for me. Along the line, of course, I've seen many people do things for me. And I'm appreciative of that. But it's not so much first about what people can do for you. It's not so much about what is in need for me. It's first about what do I have to offer. And so your personal philosophy is important. And when you know that your personal philosophy is important, you know that you can't live as an island. Okay? You can't live on your own. A tree does not make a forest. Okay? So you have to relate with people. And if you have to relate with people, it has to be by building a relationship. And so once you have defined your value or your personal philosophy, the next thing is how do I connect with people? First, you need to know that every human being on the face of the earth has a need. Often it's said, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Well, maybe not always true, but when someone meets you at the point of your need, you always remember them. So when you are going to meet someone, you are asking yourself, what can I offer this person? How do I come to the aid of this person? How do I become part of this person's life? I've been privileged to be in leadership for many years, and I've realized that some of the loneliest people you can ever meet are people in leadership because they keep giving and giving and giving and nobody attends to them. If there are, there are very few. Shortly before I came for, to, to, to present this lecture, I, I was talking with someone because someone under my leadership in another organization came to my office yesterday, two of them, and they said we have an issue. 
And then I said, what is the issue? They told me. And I said, I know the person involved. Let me call him. I couldn't reach him. And today I was able to see him. And when I saw him, I said, I'm standing on behalf of these people. And I'm going to stand as a guarantor for them. And he said to me, you tried. You tried. And I said, why? He said, it's rare to see people who stand these days as a guarantor for people. And I said, well, I'm their leader. If I cannot vouch for them, then I, I shouldn't be proud to be their leader. So, I'm saying that there are people that are always having needs. People in leadership always have needs. Your parents have needs. Your benefactors have needs. They might not be able to tell you or you might not have a solution to their needs. But in most cases, you have something to offer. So when you are getting to connect with people, you need to ask yourself, what do I have to offer? That has to be at the back of your mind first, not what do they have to offer me. Because in most cases, you are even willing to offer something to them, but you don't want anything in return. You just want to do it to better humanity. So when you have that at the back of your mind, then the next thing is to connect. Now, there are many ways to connect these days, both from Facebook to LinkedIn to Twitter to Instagram. There are many ways to connect with people. Of course, there are a lot of connections taking place, but deeper connections are very few. So, you might also have like 5,000 friends on Facebook, but you may not have up to five friends among them. What we are seeing here is how to take just the ordinary connection to another level. How you get connected and become part of people's life. And as you get connected to people, you build relationship. And I need you to understand that building relationship is a function of time and resources. Okay? How do you claim to be a friend or to have relationship with someone who doesn't have your time or who you don't have time for? So you'll be willing to spend time. You'll be willing to, to call. You'll be willing to visit if you can. Okay? Uh, you'll be willing to connect at a deeper level beyond just the face value of I know him, he knows me. One of, these things, one of the things I do these days to just get to know how deep people know each other is to ask, what's his parents' name? Or, or what are his parents' name? Where did he finish from? Basic questions. And people will fail it. And yet they will tell you he's my friend. Now what kind of friend is that? A friend that doesn't know basic information about the other person. So you've got to understand that you can build high quality relationship by your interaction. Now, when we are building relationships, there are three types of relationships that are very important to you. Relationship with people that are above you, okay? They could be mentors, they could be fathers, they could be senior friends, whatever you choose to call them. They are greater than you in one way more than one, in age, in resources, whatever it is that they have more than you. You need to have a relationship with them. You need to have a relationship with your peers, people who you are classmates, you are friends, you are almost of the same age bracket, and you need to have relationship with people below you. These three relationships are very vital in the layman's language. If you are going up, you need a relationship with people up so that they can pull you up. Okay? If you are going down, you need a relationship with people down so that when you get there, they don't trap up for you. Okay? And if you choose to stay on the same level, you need to be comfortable. But beyond that, beyond that, sincerely, you need people ahead of you. They are filled with wisdom. What we call experience is the series of mistakes and errors we have made. We tag them experience. And one of the things people ahead of you will donate to you free of charge is their experience. They just tell you about their mistakes so that you don't go make the same mistake again. So you need to build a relationship with people who are ahead of you. People who are on your level, you need a relationship with them so you can connect, you can know what is going on. They can support you when you are down, when you are there. And people who are below you, they have a lot to offer you also. Because if they are not there for you, you probably might not have your file move in some instances. So, when you begin to learn that you need to build relationship across board, then you are careful. Because these three categories of people I've mentioned, you meet them on a daily basis. From your compound, your neighborhood. That man you don't like. That woman you don't like because he's always advising you. Unsolicited advice unsolicited uh, cancer, that person is important to your life, okay? That man in your neighborhood that you don't like greeting because the way he looks at you, is important to your life. That your manager that you think he's too bossy because he's always picking on you, it's important you build a relationship with him. That woman that you think she's, she's wicked, however you must have tagged her, it's important you build a relationship with her because she's just a sample of the larger population you are going to meet. For every single one person you see, there are about seven 
thousand of them globally of that kind of person. The same personality, the same character trait. Just mention it. So you need to take more time and attention. Be tolerant. Understand yourself, self-awareness, and understand them and be able to work with them. So having connect with people, you need to be committed. After the connection, there has to be commitment. If there is no commitment, there should be no relationship. If you are not willing to be committed, and this is where you need to know, you need to be aware of yourself. What is your strength? How far can you go? If you can keep only five friends, well, maintain the five. If you can keep ten, go to ten. But don't have a friend or don't build a relationship you cannot service. If you can't service the relationship, then it's better not to start it. Because you are either going to be considered unserious or you are going to weary yourself. You don't need to go to that level. Any relationship you build, make sure you feed it for the period of time you are available. And of course, in this generation, there are many ways of communicating that wouldn't cost you too much just to make sure you keep in touch. Don't build a relationship, like I said, because you have a need. No. If you build a relationship because of humanity, the day you have a need, it will answer for you. Many years ago, I had a privilege to assist my brother to move his things, okay, because he was transferred. So he needed to move his things from Enugu down to Kaduna State. And so I went to his house, and then I saw the things. I went to the park, and then I saw an aguero, you know. I saw the tout, the area boy, like we call them. The guy was the head of the, of the, of the, of the touts. And I had a conversation with him. And he was quite interesting. And he, he helped me to arrange a vehicle. It wasn't even his own vehicle. It wasn't even the transport company he was representing. But he assisted me, and we arranged the vehicle, and we moved the things to Kaduna State. I picked his number. Once in a while, I would send him a charge card, 100 naira, 200 naira. He would call me, Ogashola, oh, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. He said, I got your message. Thank you very much. I was just doing that. I already paid him. I've done everything I needed to do. I was just feeding that relationship. For what? I don't know. He's a human being. And then one night, after many years, maybe like after like four to five years, one night, my brother was stranded in a place called Night Mile in Enugu State, around 9 p.m. And he called me and he said, Uncle, I said, yes, he said, I'm stranded. And I said, where are you? He said, I'm in Night Mile. I don't know what to do. I said, okay, hold on. And then I scrolled through my phone and I saw this Agbero. And I called him. And he said, where is your brother? And I said, he's at so so, so spot. He went there, grabbed him by the hand and lodged him in the hotel. My brother called me after the man left. He said, how did you meet this man? I smiled. I said, you won't understand. I met him five years ago. And I decided to feed the relationship. Today I don't have his contact again. But for the period I had his contact, it was useful for me. Don't look down on anybody. Except you're admiring their shoe. Okay? So when you build a relationship, you have connected with people, you need to be committed. Commitment comes in different ways. We now live in a generation of, I'm sorry to say, of young people who are not willing to serve. You call them for internship, they're asking you how much are you paying me. You need to understand that in, 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 when we talk about employability, payment is for value that you deliver. If you're an intern, you don't have a value to deliver yet that can be priced. And so you can work in a place for free for six months. Even when the person is saying, how much do you want me to pay you? you just tell the person, if you can take care of my transport and a little thing for upkeep, I'll be okay. Don't forget that every opportunity you have to stay with people that know more than you, you are building skills and experiences. So in most cases, where you are building these skills and experiences, they don't pay you. It is when you have left that point to another place that they can now see that you have added value to yourself. So when we are talking about being employable, you are not going to be, you, are just, you just finish from NYSC, and then, or you are an intern, and then you are already pricing like someone that has 10 years experience. These are two, two different levels, okay? So if you are an intern, you want to learn. You don't have the power to negotiate how much to be paid. Now, these are two, two things can happen. You can negotiate, the person will agree to pay you, but he will not add value to you deliberately. You make sure you are doing the same thing over and over again until you are tired and you get out of the system. But you can choose to look down on the money and then agree to serve. There is nobody you serve willingly and well who doesn't know your value and will not want to reward you one way or the other. Commitment. Be willing to serve people even without being paid. 
Because in the process of that, you are sharpening your skills, your talent, and as you are sharpening your skills and your talent, you are getting better because your value is also increasing. Then when you have done that, you begin to leverage on those relationships, your LinkedIn relationship. Please, it is wrong and fundamentally wrong to solicit for help when you are still building relationship. Okay? Just make sure you talk about your passion. Talk about it. Don't talk about it in such a way that the person thinks that you want them to take action. Just keep saying, oh, I love to do this. I love to do this. Sometimes you can just say, sir, ma, if you have an opportunity in this area, let me know. It's one of the areas I'm passionate about. You know, don't solicit. Sir, I need money to photocopy my CV. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because when you solicit from, from people too early, they begin to think that you came around them because of what they have. Most people that are well off have had people come around them because of what they can get from them. Don't go and add to the number. The President of America, Jeff Kennedy, you know, a woman baked a cake, chocolate cake, and went to Jeff Kennedy and said, President, I just brought a gift for you. And the president said what? He said, I learned you, li you like chocolate cake, so I just brought it. And the president said, you are the first person who will step into this office bringing something for me and not asking me for anything. And that was where this word came in. Do not ask what America can do for you. Think of what you can do for America. That was how the word came in, the phrase came about. So the woman decided to just honor the president. Anybody who you get close to, see what you can contribute to their life. Make sure there is a commitment through values. You share the, share the commitment through values. Let there be something you have to offer them. Then you can leverage on the relationships, okay? Social groups, like in your church, the group you belong to, the unit you belong to, or if you are a Muslim in the mosque, or professional association, join as a student. Try to attend their conferences and then connect with few people. And don't, don't connect with them and start giving them your CV. No, just connect and link up with them. Ask them questions, what they have learned on the field. Okay? Um, contribute to whatever you think they have to do and just support them. And you begin to leverage on that. As you build those relationships, they remember you. They bear you in mind so that when they have something to do close to what you are doing, Update your social media pages with what you are doing. They will know and they will contact you when they need you. And there's a particular platform that we all belong to. And then uh, Mr. Philip Amiola is a member of that platform. And he told me he got a gig sometimes ago to, be, to do something for that company. And I told him, the person who recommended you is on the same WhatsApp group with you in such a place. And he said he didn't know. And I said, yes, he won't know. Because he kept talking about what he could do. And then... When there was an opportunity, the person recommended him, and he was taken. Till date, I don't know if he gets to know the person. You know. So it's important. And when you are building career, I want to say that first, don't just be excited about what you think you can do. No. Don't be excited. I suggest that you do a, 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 a psychometric test. Do an assessment. And I'm going to provide my email in this video so you can reach out to me. I'm a career coach also for a particular organization. You can get to know what your values are. You can get to know what your interests are, your skills and your, your abilities. Okay? When you get to know these things, it's easier for you to connect and to network along your area of interest. So many of you now, your career journey is, is so scattered. You are not focused because you have no idea of how to analyze yourself, your personality, your interests, your values, and even your work outcomes, okay? Not everybody wants to be rich. Some just want to be comfortable. Some want to work in a neat environment. Now, you want to work in a neat environment, and then you want to be a mechanical engineer, okay? Unless you are in the area of design. You are, de you are in design engineering, because there's no how you won't get your hand dirty if you are going into mechanical engineering. So it's important that you do those analysis. If you are able to, it helps you to network well and network better. Um, there's this book by Daniel Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a good book you need to get. When you are building relationship, you must be self-aware. Put yourself under control. Okay? Um, don't, be, don't let there be outbursts of anger. Don't talk against people behind them. Ensure that you play the rule according to the game. It's Solomon in the Bible, in Proverbs, that says, Anyone who wants to be a friend must show himself friendly. There are attitudes that shows that one is a good friend. You can't be stingy, for instance, and keep friends. 
You can't be, you can't be a, a backbiter and keep friends. When you keep talking behind your friend's back, they will get to hear and they will know the kind of person you are. You can't keep malice and build friends. There are attitudes that promote relationship building. And so when you are building, ensure that you invest more than you reap. A lot of us don't see that life is all about sowing and reaping. And the reason why a lot of us don't reap is because we have not sown enough. You need to go about sowing in building relationship. Of recent, I had a boss call me. I worked with him over, maybe about 15 years ago. He called me and he said, I need you to give a lecture on uh, emotional intelligence to some PhD students. And he said, there are quite a number of them. And I said, sir, when do you want it? And he said, in three days' time. I said, sir, it's not convenient. Now, mind you, I was running a training for a federal government agency that was to last for three days. On the fourth day, I had another presentation somewhere. I'm back to back like that. And he said, this is the day he wanted. And I said, sir, I can't say no to you. You are my boss, okay? Anytime, any day. So I agreed. And I accepted that I was going to deliver the lecture. I went to work. And then I delivered the lecture. Guess what? His uh, registrar, because he owns a business school, his registrar reached out to me. And he said, we have a honorarium for what you have done. Send, send us your account number. And he sent me 100000 okay, as honorarium for one hour, 30 minutes lecture. But when I said yes, I didn't know they were going to pay me. I didn't even have it in mind. Here is it. I was willing to give. I was willing to contribute to what he was doing. In fact, that day when I gave the lecture, he said it to everyone that was present online, that he was shedding tears because he knew me before I became what I am now, okay? And he had no regret investing in me, you know? And he, I learned a lot from him. Of course, I said 15 years ago, and I'm still willing to go to any length for him. So you need to understand that relationship is all about that. It's all about giving. And then as you build those relationships, ensure that you preserve them. I, I know this, this phrase among young people that say, well, it has expired. Listen to me. Relationship can expire. But don't be the one to close the door and walk out. And if you must close the door, close it gently, just in case you have to open it again. So when you have misunderstanding, like service breakdown, like betrayal, ensure that you close the door of relationship gently, just in case you still need it. Okay? If you can tell the person, well, these are the things you did that I don't like, but I just need, to, I just need you to know. But don't be the one who goes about betraying others, because it's a question of time. They are going to talk about you. There is a WhatsApp group we have, all my classmates that we did on the graduate together. And then... A section of the country had a hangout recently. And one of us wasn't doing too well. He had issues. We had supported him in time past. And he introduced his business. People put money together and they invested in it. Guess what happened? The guy disappointed them. They tried to resolve it privately. They couldn't resolve it. They brought it to the general platform. And they removed him. Remember what we did undergraduate together? Okay? The number of years we spent... They remove him from the platform. And they say when he changed, they will bring him in. You've got to know that your character is going to speak for you. People will recommend you based on your character. Don't try to live off people. Okay? Don't try to be a smart one that you, you come around people because of what you want to get. I've had privilege to mentor a lot of people. And they come around me and they say, I want you to mentor me. And, and I'll say, okay. And there was a particular one I remember. It was in Port Harcourt, And the young man came to me and said he wanted me to mentor him. And I said, I'm free. No problem. Keep in touch. And I realized that every time he calls me or sends me a message, he has a need. Okay? Some of the times I will support him. I will send him money. And some other time I will not. I will just keep quiet. Then one day I asked him. Then I was still a PhD student. And I asked him, guy, I'm a student. I'm a father. I'm a pastor. I'm all of this. You've never for one day asked me, sir, how is your family? How is your studies? How is the ministry? How are you doing? And every time you are asking me for money, were you looking for an ATM or a mentor? And that was the last day I heard from him. I have nothing to lose. I just needed to confront him with the truth. He needed to know that that is not how to build a relationship. And so when you are building a relationship, let it be for mutual benefit, not necessarily because of what you want or what you are going to get. Ensure that you build relationship and you add value to the person. If you are able to do that, when you have a need, they will, they will, 
genuinely want to support the little way they can. I would have loved to say more than this, but I feel I should just touch every part briefly and maybe provoke some conversation. You are free to ask your questions. I will be on hand to answer them. Thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And then, uh, Philip, thank you for all that you are doing. Uh, I know it's a seed you are also sowing, and in time to come, we are going to see the result. Thank you. Bye. Wow. That was a very powerful session. Okay, please type your comments in the chat. Type your comments, your feedback. Okay, how, how did you find the session? And um, what are you going to do about what you have learned? Type in the chat. If you still have questions that you have not asked, feel free to also type those questions in the chat. We're going to attend to them all. Thank you very much once again, Dr. Shola John. We are indeed very, very grateful. Thank you for sharing with us from your wealth of knowledge and experience. And thank you for going all the way. You know, I, I understand that it took a lot of sacrifice to, to make this happen. And we do not take that for granted at all. Thank you very much and God bless you, sir. Okay, so we have these resources. Uh, those of us that are members of the Enterprise Development Program, either um, the Students' and Employability and Enterprise Development Scheme or other aspects of Enterprise Development Program, you're already familiar with these resources. Okay, but for the benefits of those that might be joining us for the first time, you can take advantage of all of these resources. They are mostly free, okay? Yes, and uh, you'll find them very valuable. The Enterprise Development Workshop, we have that every month, and it is not free. However, the value you are going to get, even in terms of the tools and resources that you will go away with, practical tools, resources, and templates, the value of those ones alone is at least 10 times, you know, <laughs> 10 times the investment that you are making. Okay, so it is for those that are ready to grow their business, those that are ready to... to um, learn okay from people that have done it instead of just doing trial and error and remember that when we talk about enterprise development and we talk about entrepreneurship it doesn't necessarily mean starting a business you can be an entrepreneur in another business okay a lot of people make it um, sound like being an employee is not okay and all of that the truth is we need employees and we need employers we need entrepreneurs we need professionals both have to work together. So if you're an employee, there is nothing wrong with that and there is nothing bad about it. If you're an entrepreneur, it's just a matter of, okay, what is your vision for your life and what should you be doing at every point in time, okay? But regardless of what you are doing, you can have an entrepreneurial approach to life and that is what all of our enterprise development programs, you know, are about. The Students' Employability and Enterprise Development Scheme, every, everything that we do in, in terms of enterprise development is about helping you to adopt an entrepreneurial approach to life, regardless of where you find yourself. So you are going to find this um, workshop very, very valuable if you are the kind of person that is ready to take action and to approach life with an entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. So the quotes to think about for this week, this is a micro learning session. I'm just going to read out the quotes and you think about them. Don't let the storms of life beat you into depression and despondency. Maintain a positive mental attitude and make a habit of speaking life-giving words. You will find that ultimately, the things that seem to be working against you are actually working for you. That's from Philip Amiola. <laughs> okay, then we have this from our guest speaker, Dr. Shola John. Relationships can expire, but don't be the one to close the door. And if you have to close the door, close it gently. You can follow him on Twitter. You have his Twitter handle there, Olu Shola John. That's O-L-U-S-O-L-A-J-O-N. Let's take a closing prayer. I declare with full assurance of faith that I have a rich, satisfying, and overflowing life. By the grace and mercy of God, I have received wisdom and power to build up vast assets that have continued to generate an abundance of wealth in profit, equity, retainers, consulting fees, 
dividends, interest, royalty, rental income, residual income, rebates, grants, gifts, annuity, capital gains, and other forms of income. My wealth and riches have continued to increase and multiply exceedingly so much that accounting for them is like counting the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. I daily present my business and career as an altar of sacrifice to God. Therefore, he has blessed the work of my hands, causing me to implement insights and ideas that have made me so successful that nations come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. I have become very great and extremely distinguished in every way. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. Remember, we have this by 6.30 a.m. every Tuesday. The best way to keep in touch is to join uh, us on Business Magic Club because that's where we share all of the relevant updates. Remember to also invite your friends if you have found this valuable. The live session holds by 6.30 a.m. on Tuesdays, and we have the replays throughout the week. However, I encourage you to join the live session. There is always something special and different about that. You can engage with others. Okay, you can, you can, you can do a whole lot that will not be possible with the replay alone. Okay, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now.